committee proceedings pursuant to House Resolution 8. We have gathered in this manner a number of times already, but before we begin, I do want to remind you of a few procedures to hopefully keep these proceedings running smoothly. First, consistent with regulations, the committee will keep microphones muted to limit background noise. Members are responsible for unmuting themselves when they seek recognition or when recognized for their five minutes. Committee staff will mute themselves only in the event of an inadvertent background noise moment. Second, when members are present in the proceeding via WebEx, they must have their cameras on. If you need to step away to attend another proceeding, please turn your camera and audio off rather than logging out of the platform. Third, when a question is put before the committee, members who are present on the WebEx platform are reminded to unmute themselves for a voice vote. Finally, in the event of a request for a record vote, we will pause proceedings to allow the clerk to set up. All members who are present remotely should stay on the platform to vote. Please do not come to the hearing room if you are already present remotely. I thank all of you for your patience and cooperation as we continue navigating these new procedures to serve our country in this great time of need. And that, with that, let me turn to, to the focus of today's meeting, helping Americans prepare for a financially secure retirement. As members of the committee are, are aware, retirement security has been one of my priorities as chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. However, my history goes back to my earliest days on the committee when I first li filed legislation to raise the cap on individual retirement account contributions. Pushed hard over the years for what successfully became known as automatic enrollment, or as I deem it, enrollment for all. Too many workers in this nation reach retirement age without the savings that they need. In fact, according to the Center for Retirement Research at Boston College, 50% of the households are at risk of not having enough to maintain their living standards in retirement. The retirement crisis is real and will only worsen unless we make saving easier and do more to encourage workers to begin planning for retirement earlier. The lessons of the pandemic are fascinating. Last Congress, this committee had great success in working together to enact the SECURE Act, the most significant retirement legislation to become law in more than a decade. Thanks to that legislation, four million more Americans now have the opportunity to save at work and an estimated 600 to 700,000 new retirement accounts will be formed. My hunch is that that estimate will be low given again the lessons we've learned through the pandemic. But more work needs to be done, and that's why I'm pleased that Ranking Member Kevin Brady and I have come together to develop H.R. 2954, the Securing a Strong Retirement Act of 2021, or the SECURE Act 2.0. Building on the success of the SECURE Act, H.R. 2954 will expand automatic enrollment in 401k plans by requiring 401k, 403B, and simple plans to automatically enroll participants in the plans upon becoming eligible with the ability for employees to opt out of coverage. Expansion of automatic enrollment will significantly increase participation in retirement savings. Since first defined and approved by Treasury in 1998, at my urging, with some measure, Automatic enrollment has boosted participation by eligible employees generally, and particularly for black, Latino, and lower wage employees. And tellingly, an early study found that adoption of auto enrollment increased participation in 401k plans by short tenure Latino employees from 19% to 75%. In addition to securing and expanding coverage and increasing retirement savings, SECURE 2.0 makes a number of simplifications and clarifications of the retirement plan current rules. All of these changes will make it easier for the American family to prepare for a financially secure retirement. I'm happy that we were able to work together on a bipartisan basis to develop this important legislation. Our efforts have resulted in an excellent product 
that will help Americans plan for their golden years, and it has broad support from stakeholders, including AARP, Edward Jones to the American Red Cross. And with that, let me now recognize Mr. Brady and acknowledge his very important work in helping to bring about this moment. Mr. Brady. Yeah, first, thank you, Chairman Neal, for holding this markup. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here today, a, a little more than two years after you and I worked together with our committee members uh, to report the SECURE Act in March of 2019, after which it became law, as you noted, later that same year. Today's markup is a testament to the progress that we can make when we work in a bipartisan way to address the real needs of all Americans. Together, uh, in this past session, we banned surprise uh, billing for American families. We reformed the IRS for the first time in two decades. And we passed five coronavirus relief bills, totaling three and a half trillion dollars that helped those hardest hit in the worst part of their pandemic. We also took a common sense approach to the SECURE Act, which is part of the reason we are successful and why we have the opportunity today to build on that foundation. With more and more Americans relying on their 401ks for their retirement, we eased administrative burdens to allow more job creators, mainly small businesses, to offer retirement plans for their workers. Not only has the SECURE Act been good for American families, workers in our economy, but it was passed and signed into law the old fashioned way from the committee up. We worked with members across the aisle until we got a product that all members could strongly agree on. This is how the Ameri well, this is what the American people want, and this is how they expect laws to be drafted. And I hope this is how we can approach the people's business going forward. Today, we're building on the tremendous success of the SECURE Act to help more Americans save for retirement at all stages of their career. Thanks to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, Americans' families uh, of four are saving 2,000 more each year, which helps them with their retirement. We saw record wage growth, uh, more job opportunities, and a significant reduction, historical reduction in poverty, all of which helps working families save for the future. Now, Americans will be able to catch up on their savings as they get closer to retirement, will have a greater control over their financial future. The pandemic has interrupted many Americans' plans to save for retirement. According to the recent Pew Research study, half of American adults reported the pandemic has made it harder for them to achieve their long-term financial goals. That's why Secure 2.0 is so important. It promotes retirement savings earlier by automatically enrolling employees in their company's 401k plans. It allows employers to match their workers' student loan repayments with contributions to their retirement plans. It encourages small businesses to set up retirement plans for their workers by fully offsetting the paperwork costs and providing a per employee credit of up to $1,000 for employer matching contributions. This bill will help Americans from all walks of life save for retirement. It also contains more than 20 provisions in the bill sponsored or co-sponsored by Republican members of the committee in standalone legislation. This is a strong show of bipartisanship. I look forward to working with you, Chairman Neal, as we advance and refine this bill, the Securing a Song Retirement Act through the legislative process in a bipartisan fashion through the rest of this year. With that, Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Thank you. Before turning to our markup of Secure 2.0, we will consider the committee's annual budget views and estimates for fiscal year 2022. Pursuant to notice and in accordance with the requirements of Section 301D of the Congressional Budget Act of 1974 and House Rule 10, Clause 4F, members have received a copy of the letter to the Budget Committee in advance of today's meeting. I want to thank Mr. Brady for working with me on this matter so that we are able to submit a consensus document to the Budget Committee that reflects the priorities of the Ways and Means Committee as a whole. And with that, I will recognize Mr. Brady for any further comments he would like to add. So I want to thank the Chairman for continuing the tradition of working across the aisle to create a consensus on the Committee's budget views and uh, estimates. This isn't merely a routine but an important practice where we lay out the work we hope to accomplish for the year. We sit together, we hash out differences, and we find common ground. 
We look forward to working with the majority, pursue an agenda to increase America's competitiveness, to make health care more affordable, and boost, and boost paychecks even further for all workers across our country. We hope to continue these discussions as more details of the president's budget emerge. Once again, I thank the chairman for working with us to reach a consensus on this year's views and estimates. I strongly urge all my colleagues to adopt this. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Thank you. The committee will now proceed to consideration of the annual budget views and estimates for fiscal year 2022. Without objection, the views and estimates will be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. If there are no amendments, I will now recognize Mr. Beyer for the purpose of offering a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that the committee do favorably transmit the committee's annual budget views and estimates letter for fiscal year 2022 to the committee on the budget. Thank you, Mr. Beyer. The question is on transmitting the Ways and Means Committee budget views and estimates for fiscal year 2022 to the committee on the budget. Members are reminded to unmute yourselves for the voice vote. All of those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Inter very interesting chorus. The, 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 <laughs> the question is on transmitting the Ways and Means Committee budget. And now, all those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the views and estimates are ordered transmitted to the committee on the budget. Without objection, staff are authorized to make technical and conforming changes, and members have two additional days to file with the committee clerk supplemental, additional, dissenting, or minority views. The next order of business is H.R. 2954, the SECURE Act 2.0. This bill will expand coverage and increase retirement savings and make a number of simplifications and clarifications of retirement plan rules. I am really proud of this bipartisan work as we have done here, but also as we were able to accomplish in the last session to help Americans prepare for a financially secure retirement. The ranking member and I, along with a very talented staff, have worked together for months to craft this legislation. In addition, Many of our members have made very meaningful contributions to this package. We've included Mr. Davis's legislation ensuring that workers with student loans don't miss out on 401k matching contributions and Representative Murphy's legislation to increase the required minimum distribution age to 75. We created a higher catch-up contribution amount for those years just before retirement a provision particularly important for pilots who have a mandatory retirement age and a priority of Representatives Sanchez and Pasquale. We have also included a number of Representative Kinds bills. For example, SECURE 2.0 provides that a 403B plan may be established and maintained as a multiple employer plan. Representative Kinds legislation fixing a problem with the startup credit and multiple employer plans also is included making it easier for small businesses to take advantage of the credit. SECURE 2.0 also includes Representative Chu's legislation that would direct the Internal Revenue Service to promote the savers credit to increase utilization of this important incentive for savings. This has also been a priority of Representative Sewell. We've included Representative Panetta's legislation that provides 403B custodial accounts that are permitted to invest in collective investment trust and his legislation reforming family attribution rules. We've included Representative Sewell's legislation to reduce by one year the period of service requirement for a long-term part-time worker to participate in 401K plans. This provision is particularly important for women who tend to work part-time more frequently than men, and we've included Mr. Swazi's legislation to direct the Treasury Department to issue regulations addressing a glitch with respect to insurance-dedicated exchange-traded funds. We have included Representative Byers' legislation that's important to the charitable community and would, among other things, index for inflation the annual IRA charitable distribution limit. The bill includes Representative Moore's legislation that would provide penalty-free withdrawals, withdrawals from retirement plans for individuals in cases of domestic abuse. 
We have included Representative Evans' legislation directing the Labor Department to update its disclosure rules to allow better comparisons among investments to aid participant decision making. And finally, we've included Mr. Pasquale's legislation that would allow first responders to exclude service-connected disability pension payments from their gross income after they reach retirement age. As is apparent from this extensive list, and I know Mr. Brady has a sizable list from his side of the aisle, this package represents the hard work of the members of the Ways and Means Committee, which I have often said we are expected to accomplish these items. The SECURE Act was the most significant retirement legislation to become law in over a decade. Let's not wait another decade to enact important provisions in the SECURE Act 2.0. Today's bill goes a long way in addressing this country's retirement challenges and crises. I urge all of my colleagues to support this much-needed legislation. Now, let me recognize Ranking Member Brady for the purpose of making an opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Neal, and I join with you in thanking our Republican and Democrat members of the committee who worked together so beautifully on this bill. The Securing the Strong Retirement Act is important legislation for American workers, for families, small businesses, and retirees. We don't just help more Americans save for retirement, we also help Americans save to take care of their families and the president. We help Main Street businesses still suffering labor shortages attract employees with better employment and retirement benefits. We help seniors in a variety of circumstances manage their retirement better. We help new families put their savings to use responsibly. We achieve all this in a number of important ways. This bill helps small businesses with up to 50 employees with a tax credit that helps them match contributions up to $1,000 per worker. We raise the amount late career workers can contribute to catch up on their retirement savings, doubling it from $5,000 a year to $10,000 a year. We support employees paying down student loan debt by allowing businesses to match contributions to a retirement plan. We help military spouses by providing a tax credit for small employers to make military spouses eligible for plan benefits. We reduce costs for retirees by cutting red tape on cost-efficient investments like ETFs. We recognize the different situations our retirees face and provide greater flexibility by raising the age for required minimum distributions to 75 years of age over time. And by reducing the penalty for failure to take these distributions from 50% to 25. And if corrected, lower that penalty even further to 10%. We help support charities by expanding options for contributions to charity from, from uh, retirement accounts so that people don't face artificial limits to giving even while they're in retirement. For families with new or adopted children, we clarify the rules that allow them to withdraw funds from retirement without penalty, so long as they repay their plan within three years. We stand up for survivors of domestic violence by exempting them from any penalty for taking hardship withdrawals from a retirement plan. Thanks to these provisions and many others, Americans will be able to build their retirement savings and have greater control or their financial future. I am thankful to Chairman Neal and his team for working closely with us on this bill. I'm thankful to my fellow committee members for their leadership on so many provisions in this bill and their insights as we've worked to build this package. We are building on the tremendous success of the SECURE Act to help more Americans save for retirement at every stage in their career. I'm honored that today's bipartisan markup uh, is a demonstration of how Congress can achieve great things for all Americans. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Brady. You. Without objection, letters of support submitted to the committee will be included in the official record. These 81 letters are from various organizations, including AARP, Edward Jones, the American Red Cross, the Pension Rights Center, the Girl Scouts USA, the Normal, Norman Rockwell Museum, and the YMCA Alliance of Massachusetts. The committee will now proceed to consideration of H.R. 2954, and without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. At this time, I offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute, which was distributed in advance, along with a green sheet, explaining it. 
Without objection, the amendment in the nature of a substitute shall be considered as read, open for amendment at any point, and considered base text for the purpose of amendment. Now, let me turn to Tom Barthold, Chief of Staff for the Joint Committee on Taxation, to provide the technical description of the amendment in the nature of a substitute with an emphasis on the changes made since introduction. I ask that members hold their questions until after Mr. Barthold's presentation. Mr. Barthold. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the uh, committee. Uh, the members have before them three joint committee documents, JCX 21 and 23, which describe the underlying legislation and the chairman's amendment in the nature of a substitute. The amendments made, uh, the changes made in the amendment in nature of a substitute are largely clerical in nature. JCX 22 also provides the staff's revenue analysis of the provisions of the bill. Uh, both Chairman Neal and Ranking Member Brady highlighted uh, most of the, uh, the major uh, provisions of the legislation. Uh, so let me just take uh, a couple of moments here to note a couple of other uh, provisions uh, in the legislation which are large, at least in terms of our estimated budgetary, uh, budgetary effect. The legislation would substantially increase a number of opportunities for Roth type contributions to uh, IRAs or defined contribution plans. Remember, a Roth type contribution means that the contribution is made on a pre tax uh, basis. So, for example, the legislation contains a provision that elective catch up contributions in 401A, 403B, and 457 plans must be made on a pre tax, that is, on a Roth basis. Uh, the legislation would also permit at the election of the plan for employer matching contributions to be on a pre-tax, that is on a Roth basis. Under uh, present law, uh, that is not uh, permitted. Uh, and then just to amplify on a point that both the chairman and ranking member uh, noted, there are changes made to the, qualify, uh, to the qualified charitable distribution uh, rules for IRAs, the chairman and ranking member both noted that the present law uh, $100,000 annual limitation on qualified charitable distributions is indexed for inflation uh, in the future. The legislation also provides that distributions from an IRA to a charitable remainder trust or a charitable gift annuity uh, will satisfy the required minimum distribution requirements. This is an election that a taxpayer may make on a one-time uh, lifetime basis and is limited to $50,000 uh, uh, in the case of a distribution to a charitable remainder trust or charitable gift annuity. There are many uh, other provisions in the legislation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the members might have uh, regarding uh, uh, these uh, provisions or any of the others. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Barthold. Are there any questions of Mr. Barthold about the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Is there any member who wishes to strike the last word? Let me recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Thompson, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, thank you and thank Mr. Brady for your hard work on this important piece of legislation. Ensuring that Americans have the resources they need uh, for secure retirement is a bipartisan priority uh, shown today uh, by our efforts on this piece of legislation. Sadly, more than 50 million Americans go to work each day with no retirement savings and no certainty for what the future holds. After the events of this last year, many Americans are feeling the financial uncertainty, uncertainty more acutely than ever before. In addition to meeting workers and families' most pressing and immediate needs, Congress should be working to ensure financial security is available to all Americans at every stage of their lives. The Securing a Strong Retirement Act of 2021 does just that. This bipartisan legislation will give workers more tools to plan for retirement, and the flexibility to control their savings 
so that they are better prepared to retire with the financial stability they deserve and worked so hard to obtain. One tool that will be particularly helpful to people in my district is the student loan provision found in section 109. This allows individuals to pay down a student loan instead of contributing to a 401k plan while still receiving an employer match in their retirement plan. Over the last year, I've received hundreds of letters every month from people in my district who are facing an overwhelming amount of student loan debt. These are people who are struggling to start their careers and move into the next phase of their life. The SECURE Act will give them an opportunity to pay down their student loans while also investing in their future. This bill will help people in my district approach retirement with the confidence and the dignity they deserve after decades of hard work and sacrifice. I'm proud to support this legislation here today, and I thank all my colleagues uh, for working in a bipartisan manner to make sure it becomes reality. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Now let me recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Nunez, to strike the last word. Would the gentleman unmute himself? Chairman, can you hear me? I can hear you barely. Okay. Let Here we go. All right. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank Ranking Member Brady for his leadership in delivering a strong bipartisan package that gives American workers a greater measure of retirement security in the wake of these destructive, prolonged government mandated lock lockdowns. My home state of California has implemented some of the most restrictive lockdowns in the nation. And I've heard concerns from countless constituents regarding retirement savings that is suffering during the pandemic's business closures. Pandemic or not, though, there's several bipartisan provisions under consideration today that will allow individuals to receive an employer match from the retirement plans to paying down student loans. And I think uh, all the work that uh, Chairman, that you've done with Mr. Brady, uh, I think uh, we should all be proud of this work and hopefully we'll do more of this. So I think it'll be a great, great bill and look forward to its passage and I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Larson, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll strike the last word. And the gentleman's recognized. Chairman, I am pleased today to speak in support Secures Act 2.0, as we actually call it. And I especially want to commend you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brady, for the example of bipartisanship and does work. Could the gentleman speak up? Uh, if you want to go back to saying what a great job the chairman did, that's okay as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go over that again. What a great job the chairman did. Ranking member Brady, are the preeminent example of what working together in a bipartisan fashion is all about. It's an example for Congress, and I commend you for it. The SECURE 2.0 shows Congress is capable of working together to fashion solutions that will have impact on everyone's lives. Provisions in this bill will make meaningful difference in people's lives by improving access to a secure retirement. Secure retirement is the cornerstone of basic human dignity, which is why this bill is so important. It's also, uh, Mr. Chairman, why it's important for us to uh, strengthen and expand our Social Security. Uh, Social Security as uh, financial school, there are three legs to a stool in terms of making sure that our citizens are secure, and certainly pensions but Social Security is a critical link as well. The average benefit of 18000 for all of our citizens across this country is much more for us to do. Five million of our fellow Americans will pay into a system, uh, live, uh, get a below poverty level check from Social Security. Social Security benefits have not kept up with basic expenses that beneficiaries need, like food, housing, and medical bills. 
Congress has not acted since 1983 on Social Security and not improved its benefits for more than 50 years. We are lucky to have a president who shares our view that Social Security is a sacred trust and one that he stands ready to protect. And I think this presents us as well as another great opportunity to have bipartisan effort because everybody in on this committee understands the importance and significance of Social Security and it's heard from their constituents directly. I'll be supplying everybody on the committee with a very special card that tells you exactly how many recipients you have and exactly what that monthly income is from Social Security. I am proud today to support this bill because we needed to strengthen each leg, and this is a vital, important leg to strengthen. But we also need to turn our attention now to Social Security. We heard it eloquently stated by Sean Castle with the Paralyzed Veterans of America shared his story that without Social Security, he would be without that disability payment that we so desperately need to strengthen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to turning our attention now that we've completed Secures Act 2 vote to Social Security and indeed the nation's number one anti-poverty program for seniors and for children. With that, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. And Additionally, we thank him for his profound work on Social Security over all of these years. With that, let me recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Buchanan, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I also want to thank Ranking Member Brady. Uh, this is so critical to the country. Uh, I see it especially clear in my districts, one of the oldest districts in the country. It's so painful to see so many 65 and older seniors. Uh, that have little or nothing other than Medicare and Social Security. And that's why we got to do all we can to help the next generation as well as a lot of seniors. And uh, just to make the point, uh, just to, through a few statistics, 39% uh, of people in America, and this is based on the Federal Reserve Report, have less than uh, $400 in the bank for emergencies. One third of Americans have less than $1,000 and savings. 40% of millennials don't even have access to uh, a retirement program. And 35% of employers in the private sector uh, don't offer retirement plans. And you, I chaired the, our local chamber in Sarasota. We had about 2,500 businesses. Most of those businesses, 90% of those businesses were 15 employees and less. Uh, so some of these improvements. I'm very excited about what happened with C Secure Act, the original one, and now uh, with 2.0, I think it makes a big difference. But I, I do want to just touch on a couple of things in terms of seniors. Again, uh, we moved in Secure Act 1, uh, 70 and a half to 72. Now in this bill, 72 to 75, over 10 years, it will make a big difference. A lot of our seniors are very excited about that especially the ones 55 and not that there's that senior, but uh, there will be senior at some point in the, in the, in the future. Also in terms of military spouses being fully invested, a lot of our military uh, move in and around the country. We have in our district alone, 77,000 veterans. It's very important as a part of this bill. And then the 40, 403B will give additional access to employees like teachers, nurses, and doctors. So again, just in conclusion, thanks so much for both of your leadership. It's great as a committee, we can work together and make a difference. Uh, and I'd like to see a lot more move in this direction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Now let me recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Kine, to strike the last word. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanna thank you for all your hard work in putting together this important bipartisan package legislation. That's going to make it easier for Americans to save for retirement. You know, with the passage of SECURE last year, Mr. Chairman, this is a great addition now in making it easier for small businesses across the country to offer retirement savings plans for their employees. And I'm also pleased that legislation I've introduced yet again this year with Representatives Mike Kelly and Jason Smith, H.R. 2927, or the SAVE Act, was included in the package we're marking up today. Mr. Chairman, you may recall that it was about 12 years ago when I introduced the SAVE Act, 
with uh, Representative Dave Riker uh, when he was a member of the committee. So it's in that category of uh, patients may find some reward uh, down the line, and, and today's the day. Now, the SAVE Act takes a number of important steps to help Americans save for retirement, for example, by allowing the 403B plans to participate in multi-employer, uh, multiple employer plans or MEPs, and enhancing the startup tax credit to encourage more employers to join a MEP. And I look forward to these changes becoming law soon. But I'd also like to thank you and Ranking Member Brady for your support for legislation that I've introduced with Congressman Jason Smith, the Promotion and Expansion of Private Employee Ownership Act, which will incent S corporations to convert to employee stock ownership plans or ESOPs. And although we didn't, we weren't able to include the full legislation in the package before us today, uh, we are able to include language that highlights the benefits that employee owners of S Corp ESOPs enjoy and the positive impact that the ESOP model has had uh, on saving for retirement. And with that, I'd yield to uh, Representative Jason Smith for his remarks. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, overall, this bill contains great policies to support small businesses and help working Americans save more for retirement. I look forward to working with you and with Chairman Neal and Ranking Member Brady to further strengthen the bill ahead of, uh, ahead of the floor. Our ESOP legislation builds on the success of ESOPs and, and giving employees a stake in the businesses where they work by allowing S corporations to more easily convert to an employee owned model. We encourage entrepreneurs planning for retirement to sell their businesses to employees rather, to, rather than to a competitor. This in turn gives employees greater economic security and helps them build their own nest egg. I'm eager to see this ESOP measure passed into law and I'm committed to doing everything I can to make sure Missouri workers and Main Street businesses will benefit from it. I thank Chairman Nill and Ranking Member Brady for their support of this policy and I yield back. And Mr. Chairman, in conclusion, I, I do look forward to continuing to work with you and other members uh, on the committee on this important ESOP provision uh, in anticipation of consider in consideration of the bill on the floor at, at the earliest uh, uh, opportunity possible. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Kind and Mr. Smith, for your comments on the promotion and expansion of Private Employee Ownership Act. You know I've been a longtime supporter of this legislation, and I am committed to working with you to get it over the finish line. I like very much the ESOP model. Now, let me recognize the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Smith, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, Mr. Brady, thank you for your work in, in this, your diligent work in putting this package together. I think it, it shows what our committee can do, and uh, I'm anxious uh, to see this perhaps um, to lead us forward uh, with, with more opportunities uh, working together. It's certainly my, my hope that uh, the speaker uh, will respect the, the bipartisan nature uh, in agreement uh, uh, of this package uh, so that we can move forward to help the American people. So with that, and in the interest of time, I yield back. Thank you. Thank the gentleman. Now let me recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pasquale, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Ranking Member Brady. Uh, the part, bipartisan legislation is a worthy follow-up to the first SECURE Act enacted last Congress. The first SECURE Act provided much needed assistance to help all Americans save for retirement. It was welcomed by employees and employers alike. But we knew even then there was still much work to be done. There is a retirement crisis in our country. Almost half of all working age households are at risk of losing their standard of living in retirement, as you mentioned in your opening statement. Nearly one in three workers have no retirement savings. Now, what is that going to affect in, down the road? Employer-sponsored retirement plans are essential to helping Americans prepare for, for retirement. This new legislation incentivizes, is, uh, incentivizes employers and aides, our workers, in saving their retirement. I'm gratified to see several ideas I have advocated 
for in this legislation. I'm happy that the catch-up contribution provision was included. This measure is especially helpful to workers that have a mandatory retirement age of 65, as was mentioned, our airline pilots though it can be utilized obviously by others in addition i applaud the provision that would exclude from income the disability related pension payments of first responders as the co-chair of first responders in the congress of the united states i join my colleague mr norman of south carolina in introducing legislation to do this last congress this protection is critical relief for brave first responders who suffered a service-connected disability injury. And finally, I'm uh, excited that this bill includes a provision I supported first introduced by my good friend Danny Davis to permit employers to match their employees' student loan, those loan payments with retirement contributions. Student loan debt remains a major problem in our country. It should not prevent workers from saving for their retirement, especially when employers are willing to assist. There are many other worthwhile provisions and you pointed them out. I look forward to moving this bipartisan bill out of the committee today so that it can be considered by the full house. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and great work. Thank you, Mr. Pasquale. Let me recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Reed, to strike the last word. Would you unmute, Mr. Reed? So while we get you into the call, Mr. Reed, we will then recognize Mr. Kelly to strike the last word. I've already been quite Thank you, Chairman. And, uh, Mr. Brady, thank you. I know we're going to go through this all day, and it's really nice to be thanking each other, but I think we're, more than anything else, this is peace of mind day. Uh, and for somebody who's been in small business all my life and have, uh, have watched as a program that my father started back in 1970 and watched numbers of people who have worked together with us to build some type of a, of a, of a goal for security, uh, as people we work with every day. This is a great day. This is a great day. And I think the biggest accomplishment today, well, perhaps somebody will cover this in a way that reassures the American people that Republicans and Democrats can work together for the people they represent. And that's across the board. I think too often we get caught up as, oh, I'm, I'm an R or I'm a D or I'm just me or whatever the hell it is that we think we are. I'll tell you what, there's nobody more deserving of this type of work than our fellow citizens. So for us to be able to get together today, and uh, you know how, how I feel about this, Mr. Neal and Mr. Brady, you all have always been very uh, very positive on this. Mr. Kind and I have worked on a lot of bills, but more than anything else, I, I gotta tell you, gang, we are taking care of the generational gap that, that applies right now. There's nothing more of a heavier burden and ch our children worrying about how am I going to take care of mom and dad because they don't really have anything in their bank accounts right now. So it's always comes back to who's paying for all this stuff. And people mistakenly think it's the government as opposed to the people who actually pay for everything. So, uh, listen, good to be on this call with you today. Good to be on this virtual thing. I know this is difficult, though. This is crazy. I'm looking at this like how Hollywood's I'm seeing, I'm seeing Steve Horsford. He's having a good time in his car riding around. Hopefully it's a General <laughs> Motors car. Uh, but... Is it Mr. Neal, Mr. Brady, everybody on this today, thank you all for doing what we're supposed to do, and that's look after our fellow Americans as they go into their golden years with a little more gold in their pockets so we don't put a lot of pressure on the generation that's following. Thanks so much. God bless you all. Let's just have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Let me recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Davis, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I thank you and, and Ranking Member Brady for inserting the provisions of my retirement parity for Student Loans Act of 2021 in this bill. I was pleased to join with Representatives LaHood, Pasquale, Larson, Estes, and Sewell in introducing this language and look forward to its passage. 
Section 109 improves retirement savings and lowers educational debt by allowing employers to make full 1K matching payments for employees making student loan payments who cannot afford to contribute to their retirement savings. Although over 30 quarters of Americans have access to an employment-based retirement savings account, few Americans can make the maximum contribution of $19,500 to their retirement savings. Any contribution to retirement savings is particularly limited for millennials struggling with heavy student loan debt. The average student loan balance for 2019 graduates was $32,731, and only 30% of young workers use 401k programs to save for retirement. Iron and Men engages young workers with student loan debt into savings for retirement earlier and enables these workers to repay educational loans faster. By allowing employers to contribute to employer match into a retirement plan based on an employee's student loan payment, younger workers who currently cannot afford to save for their retirement will begin saving much sooner. This provision is a small yet critically important tool for retirement and for employers to retain their workforce and ensure there are significant resources provided for retirement. I'd also like to submit for the record a letter of support from the American Retirement Association for this provision. So Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Brady, I thank both of you again for support and yield any remaining time to Representative LaHood or any co-sponsors of the RPSLA. And I yield forward. The gentleman has yielded back his time. Or Mr. LaHood, will we, Mr. LaHood will be recognized in a bit as well on, in the regular order. So with that, let me proceed to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Rice, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm so happy to be here today uh, to participate in this markup. This uh, piece of legislation, you know, too, too often we hear that Congress is broken and can't work in a bipartisan fashion to solve problems of real Americans, but this particular piece of legislation is uh, uh, proves that exactly the opposite is true. This piece of legislation, we, we always hear in, in this country that we have a retirement crisis, and this piece of legislation speaks directly to that crisis. I appreciate the efforts of Chairman Neal and Ranking Member Brady in bringing this, assembling this bill and bringing it to us to mark up here today. This bill knocks down many regulatory back barriers to uh, establishment and administration of retirement plans. It expands its incentives for small businesses to establish retirement plans. It provides more incentive for employees of businesses large and small to participate in retirement plans. It encourages businesses to contribute to the retirement of young employees struggling with student loan debt. It allows military spouses to participate in retirement plans. It allows more flexibility for aging retirees who every day are living longer. So this is a very, very good piece of legislation that will directly benefit Americans and work towards solving the problems of real Americans who have not saved enough for retirement. And I wholeheartedly uh, uh, endorse this piece of legislation, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Blumenauer, to strike the last word. Could you uh, unmute, Mr. Blumenauer? that we're having today. I appreciate the work that you have done with the ranking member to incorporate the rich mixture 
of proposals that the committee members have developed to try and deal with what we all recognize is a looming retirement crisis in this country. I hope that we're able to continue both in the spirit and the co collaboration to refine what we can do going forward. This is not the last word, as uh, Mr. Kine referenced in terms of ESOPs, uh, being able to move forward. You've acknowledged an, an interest, Mr. Chairman, in doing this. I hope we can continue down that path. But I would say I hope the same spirit of innovation and creativity to try and deal with the serious problems facing Americans as they face retirement, uh, we could have the same sense of bipartisan urgency as we deal with the other crisis that our friend Mr. Larson has uh, focused on like a laser, and that's the looming crisis with Social Security. We all know it's there. We all know that there are a limited array of initiatives that can make a big difference with it. And we know that the American public has demonstrated an interest in having a rich mixture of solutions, uh, carrots and sticks. I hope, I hope that at some point this becomes a, an item of interest with some urgency with this committee. We can go ahead and punt for another session of Congress, but that just makes the problem harder to resolve and the ultimate uh, uh, solution more expensive. I think the American people deserve better, uh, and I commend Mr. Larson for his continued advocacy here, and I hope that this finds its way into our agenda in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Schweikert, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, the amusing part is about five years ago, I had a young reporter ask me what my single biggest concern was, um, now being on Ways and Means. And I turned to her and said, um, retirement security. And so there is actually a certain joy in the fact that it continues to be now dealt with seriously by the committee. Um, I would beg of you to consider um, sometime over the next several months, if we could ever actually have a sit down with a handful of actuaries, people looking at our demographics, more than just the Social Security Act actuaries, because you, we've seen the story to, uh, yesterday of fertility rates in our country continue to collapse. Um, the fact of the matter is how many of our brothers and sisters are moving in towards their retirement years with minimal savings, minimal um, ability to just survive in their retirement years? And are there some things that the, if there's going to be a SECURE Act 3.0, we could do to incentivize those who wish to continue to work, that they're not penalized for that work? And that gets a little trickier because it means we would have to sort of look at Social Security, Medicare, some of the other inputs. Um, but I think we need to look at this a little more holistically. But this is a terrific step being done today. And thank you to Brady and to you, Mr. Chairman, for making this go forward. Thank the gentleman. Let me now recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Higgins, to strike the last word. Thank you, Chairman Neal, for your longstanding commitment to improving retirement uh, security for hardworking Americans. The promise of a comfortable retirement is essential to our nation and uh, to our lives, and it is imperative that we strengthen ways to reach that goal. I strongly support the policies of this package and want to highlight the ESOP Fairness Act legislation I previously introduced with Mr. Kelly of Pennsylvania to encourage employee ownership of small firms that can help employees build wealth for retirement. As you know, Mr. Chairman, employee stock ownership plans, more commonly known as ESOPs, are benefit plans that encourage employees to own a stake in their company. Employee plans aid in reducing racial and gender wealth gaps and benefit low to moderate income workers through fostering stakeholder capitalism and putting wealth in the pockets of workers. Current IRS regulations limit the ability of non-exchange traded companies to offer their employees ESOP plans 
without costly appraisals that are often financially unrealistic for smaller publicly traded companies. The ESOP Fairness Act would reduce those barriers, allow employees to have a stake in their company and share in the profits. Like the legislation we are marking up today, this provision is bipartisan in nature and would benefit employees across the country. I ask for your commitment uh, to including the ESOP Fairness Act in a manager's amendment of this bill before it proceeds uh, for full consideration. I thank the gentleman. Mr. Higgins, for sharing your views with me on this matter. I know that there are views that are shared by colleagues on both sides of the, of the aisle. We have co-sponsored the legislation in the previous Congress, and I'm committed to working with you to get the ESOP Fairness Act across the finish line. Does the gentleman yield back? Yes. We will now proceed to recognizing the gentlelady from Indiana, Ms. Wolarski, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to um, our ranking member as well. I'm thrilled today to be here and, and doing this bipartisan legislation and just kind of, again, showing America what we can do on the ways and means when we come together and work on behalf of our fellow Americans. Um, I'm thrilled with securing a strong retirement act of 2021 bipartisan legislation builds on the secure act of 2019 and helps hardworking Hoosiers save more money for retirement. So I don't want to, uh, I, I echo the comments of those who spoke before me, but I think, you know, as we look at this, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has upended so many lives across the country, legislation to make it easier on families to save retirement is needed now more than ever. So in a sense, in a spirit of cooperation and celebration, um, Mr. Chairman, I yield back and thank you for all of your efforts. I thank the gentlelady. Let me recognize the gentlelady from Alabama, Ms. Sewell, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to first commend you and our staff uh, and the staff of both sides of the aisle in order to get this uh, wonderful bill, Secure Act 2.0, uh, before us today. I think that uh, America is facing a retirement crisis. Uh, stagnant wages and the shift from defined benefit plans to defined contribution plans have left aging workers with less and less in their retirement accounts. In Alabama's 7th Congressional District, my district, the median income is $38,000 a year. It's hard enough for working families to put away money each month for retirement, let alone be able to take care of all of the necessities they have throughout the month. Unfortunately, working families also confront a retirement system where the incentives to save for retirement are often designed for the benefit of the wealthy or well-off. Moreover, while many Americans are forced to work past retirement age to make up for a limited retirement savings. Many of, our, of my constituents work blue collar jobs and cannot work past retirement due to disability or health concerns, leaving them financially vulnerable in retirement. As policymakers, we can and must do better. I am so thrilled that we're doing so in a bipartisan manner. We all know that the first step to addressing our retirement crisis is to incentivize participation. The SECURE 2.0 uh, Act does just this by requiring 401k plans and 403b plans to automatically enroll workers once they become eligible. I'm also glad to know that my bill, H.R. 2944, is included in the SECURE Act 2.0. This legislation would reduce the retirement plan period of service requirement for long-term part-time employees. Simply put, this legislation would incentivize saving by making it easier for part-time workers to start contributing to their employer's 401k plans. In my district, these long-term part-time employees are disproportionately women and women of color. Many of these women are the foundation of, of their households, not only raising children, but also sometimes serving as the primary caregiver for their elderly parents. These part-time workers deserve to retire with dignity, and they should have the access to the same retirement tools that their fellow employees have. To put it simply, this is an equity issue. We must do better in finding ways that help working and middle-class families build a retirement nest egg. I believe that my bill is a, a great step in the right direction, and I'm pleased it is included in this legislation today. I'm also pleased that our colleague Judy Chu's bill, H.R. 2913, the Encourage 
Americans Savings Act, which Jimmy Panetta and I, our original co-sponsors, is also included in today's bill. Low-income workers in Alabama and across this country are especially vulnerable to financial instability and have fewer opportunities to build a secure retirement. Through the creation of a savers match, the Encourage Americans to Save Act would give these employees and workers an immediate return on their investment and ensure that they can build a path towards a secure future. Finally, I'm also uh, glad to be an original co-sponsor of our, of our colleagues, Danny Davis's bill, HR 2917, which is also included in today's uh, bill. Uh, this would address the link between college debt and the inability to save for retirement. Too many Americans are missing out on receiving their employers matching uh, contributions to their retirement plans because they are forced to prioritize paying down student loan debt over saving for their retirement. This bill would allow employees to receive these matching funds by repaying their student loans. Again, I would like to thank all of our colleagues uh, for joining us today uh, on this very important piece of legislation. Uh, pairing with the original SECURE Act, the SECURE Act 2.0 will indeed help Americans save for the future. Thank you, and I yield back the balance. I thank time. the gentlelady. Let me now recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. LaHood, to strike the last word. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and let me compliment you uh, and uh, Ranking Member Brady for leading this effort on comprehensive retirement um, reform and, and package uh, that we're presenting today, uh, working in a collaborative, bipartisan way uh, together. You came up with a great product along with all the other members of the Ways and Means Committee. So um, congratulations on that. Um, I want to mention two bills, Mr. Chairman, uh, that I worked in a bipartisan way on uh, as a part of this bill. Uh, first one, section 109 of Securing a Strong Retirement Act includes a provision that allows employers to make matching contribution payments for employees who are making monthly student debt payments in lieu of salary reduction contributions. Uh, we've heard from a couple of my colleagues talking about this, uh, and I was proud to co-lead this standalone legislation, which is HR, which was HR 2917, the Retirement Parity for Student Loans Act, with my colleague from Illinois, uh, Danny Davis. Many individuals with student debt, especially entry-level and low-salary employees, do not have the financial security to both pay down student debt and save for retirement. This bill will provide those individuals with the opportunity to do both. And so proud to have that included here today. I also want to mention uh, that I was pleased to see another one of our bills, uh, which I co-led with um, my colleagues, um, Jimmy Panetta, Ron Estes, and Brendan Boyle. That's H.R. Uh, 2741, the Public Service Retirement Fairness Act, which uh, was included in here also. Uh, this provision will level the playing field and ensure public sector and nonprofit retirement savings programs have the same access to low cost investments as private sector retirement plans by allowing 403B plans to invest in collective investment trusts. This fix will benefit Illinois teachers, nonprofit employees, and public servants as they save for their hard earned retirement. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, congratulations to you and Ranking Member Brady. Look forward to continuing to support this bill as it moves through the process and uh, becomes, uh, hopefully becomes law. Uh, thank you, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Chu, to strike the last word. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I offer my support for the bill before us today, H.R. 2954, the Securing a Strong Retirement Act, and I thank the chair for all his hard work. This bill continues the work the committee began two years ago with the SECURE Act to expand access to retirement savings and enhance retirement readiness for millions of Americans across the country. But we must recognize circumstances today that will make it harder to save for retirement than they did two years ago when we first passed the SECURE Act. Congress, and especially this committee, has provided an unprecedented amount of financial relief to families and workers during the pandemic while we work to vaccinate the population and rebuild our economy. Everything from stimulus checks to enhanced unemployment assistance and even allowing households to tap into their retirement savings without penalties. And yet, 
in the past year, close to 46 million Americans depleted all the emergency savings they had. Americans have struggled like never before, which means that it's critical that this committee act swiftly to help put families back on sound financial footing and make it easier to save for retirement. And I am so pleased that a provision from my bill, the Encouraging Americans to Save Act, is included in today's legislation. My language directs the IRS to promote the savers credit to ensure more hardworking families are aware of the federal incentive to save for their future retirement. And even more importantly, the diverse nature of the IRS promotional materials, digital, print, and in 10 languages beyond English, will ensure that these promotional efforts help educate all kinds of taxpayers about the savers credit um, and those taxpayers from all walks of life. Sadly, the loss of income last year means some families will qualify for the savers credit this year when filing their taxes, a sure sign that the savers credit is due for some updates. So I encourage this committee to consider my bill, the Encouraging Americans to Save Act in the near future. This bill not only increases the income eligibility threshold so more working class taxpayers can take credit, um, take advantage of the credit, but it also increases the amount of the credit so it incentivizes more saving. It also simplifies the credit so that it is 50% of any contribution up to $3,000, reforming the current complicated tiered structure. And most importantly, the bill makes the credit fully refundable so lower income taxpayers have an incentive to save for their retirement. I thank the chairman for his support of the savers credit in the bill before us today and look forward to continued discussions around how to expand and improve upon the savers credit in the near future. I'm also pleased that the bill before us today includes numerous common sense provisions from my colleagues that will help families save for retirement. As a member of the Small Business Committee, I'd like to thank Congress Member Kine for his continued work to ensure small businesses can come together to offer retirement plans at a reasonable cost. 55 million workers in the private sector do not have access to retirement plans from their employer. And I'm hopeful that expanding the startup credit will help address the needs of those workers and small businesses. And as a former college professor, I'd like to thank Congress Member Davis for his work to support the millions of Americans burdened with student loan debt. Some workers are leaving potential retirement savings on the table because they feel compelled to focus on paying off their student loan debt over contributing to their future retirement. But the changes in this bill will allow employers to match those student loan payments as if they were retirement savings in a savings account. Those employers will truly help those workers save for retirement. I also believe there is more bipartisan work this committee can accomplish on behalf of the American people to ensure better financial security. One such measure would be advancing the ABLE um, uh, ADE adjustment account to <laughs> expand the eligibility with for individuals with disabilities to save for their expenses through ABLE accounts. And I'm proud to co-lead this with Congress members Cardenas and McMorris Rogers. Mr. Chair, thank you for your leadership to bring this bill forward today to support families in their retirement years. And I look forward to working with this committee on common sense approaches to creating financial stability for all families. I urge support of this package and I yield back. I thank the gentlelady. Let me recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Dr. Winstrip, to strike the last word. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I wanna thank you and Ranking Member Brady and really this whole team for putting together this great bill. You know, I often try to look at a bill and ask myself, does it give, does this bill give Americans more freedom? And will the next generation of Americans say thank you for it? And I can say that this bill does that. And I think we should all be excited about that. And in all my years of medical practice, so often I had senior patients and they would talk about how they really weren't prepared for retirement in the way that they thought they were or had hoped that they would be. And when I visit retirement homes, 
they would talk about generations of Americans that really didn't prepare for retirement in the way that they needed and they struggle today. And so I think this is a great bill. Not only does it help our military and our spouses and disabled military, but to help those that have student loans. It's someone who had quite a bit in student loans. Uh, and I remember when I first started in my medical practice, uh, advisor told me, pay off your student loans and then start putting as much into retirement as you possibly can. Well, this is an even greater opportunity. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to be part of this with, with the rest of this team on Ways and Means Committee and I'm thrilled to put together a bill that I think will greatly reduce many of the financial stresses uh, that come with retirement and especially for the next generation. So um, thanks everybody. I give my strong support to this bill. Thank you, Dr. Winstrup. Let me recognize the gentlelady from Wisconsin, Ms. Moore, to strike the last word. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, uh, for this exceptional uh, uh, hearing. And, uh, oh, I moved to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I'm so proud of the work that this committee has done since you've become chairman, and, and I am so pleased to become a member of this committee to expand opportunities for Americans to uh, expand their retirement savings. We know that this is a crisis in this country, and I'm so pleased that we've been able to come together uh, on a bipartisan basis to, uh, to pass this package today. This package includes so many important initiatives, uh, that I fear five minutes is not enough time to talk about them all. But just to mention a few, expanding the automatic enrollment and retirement plans, delaying the age when minimum distributions will start, expanding access to multiple employer plans. I'm a really big fan of opening the door to uh, ESOPs. Of course, support for students with loan debt. But I want to elucidate something that I'm particularly excited about today, and that's the legislation uh, that includes an important bill that I lead with Congresswoman uh, McBath and Congressman Schmucker, the Savi Savings Access for Escaping and Rebuilding uh, Act, or the SAFER Act. Uh, this bipartisan legislation would allow survivors of domestic abuse to draw on their retirement plans without facing the 10% early uh, withdrawal tax. Uh, domestic uh, abuse uh, survivors often need access to financial resources to build a safe and successful life for themselves. This bill will create an avenue for domestic abuse survivors who have retirement accounts to access uh, financial resources. Financial concerns, of course, are a significant reason why many victims stay in or return to an abusive relationship. And providing access to these resources can help empower domestic abuse victims to seek safety, for example, um, by helping them afford basic necessities uh, like shelter. Uh, as the committee may be aware, leaving an abusive relationship is often the most dangerous and too often the most life-threatening decision a victim can make. And access to financial resources is, is a critical component to achieving uh, freedom safely. I certainly urge my colleagues to vote in support of the overall legislation uh, that we're marking up today and to champion uh, this provision that will help abuse victims get out of dangerous relationships uh, and living situations. And with that, I will yield back, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentlelady. Let me recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Arrington, to strike the last word. Mr. Arrington, there I am. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mr. Arrington. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> Mr. Chairman uh, and Ranking Member Brady, um, it is a delight. It is a joy to, uh, to be a part of a bipartisan effort that is going to help all Americans with uh, a very important endeavor, and that's to save for retirement. I love what we were able to do, Republican and Democrat, 
uh, in Secure Act uh, first phase and now in Secure 2.0 or the Secure Strong Retirement Act, we are building on that, going to the next level to incentivize and encourage uh, people to save for a more secure retirement. Mr. Chairman, thank you for uh, uh, for uh, you know leading this uh, with Ranking Member Brady and the Republicans for a a, a healthy dose of bipartisanship. Um, I think uh, we're long overdue for that, and both sides contribute to the to the partisanship. It's not a Democrat problem; it's uh, it's it's a congressional problem. But I'm very happy with the outcome here. I love what we did in, in the uh, surprise medical building. And between that piece of legislation and this, these are two of the best uh, initiatives for our great country and our wonderful citizens that we've done. Um, I really like incentivizing the small businesses for 100% startup, letting them have a lower tax liability to offset the startup cost and the matching cost. Uh, also allowing nonprofits to band together to offer retirement benefits to their employees. Uh, uh, another one that stands out to me is allowing employers to, uh, to uh, match their employees when they're paying down their student loan debt. But altogether, just a great piece of legislation. It's disconcerting, but this is life. It's just unpredictable. Uh, the pandemic has highlighted um, the unanticipated events that uh, require us to, to uh, build on our retirement savings. I think there are future concerns about the economy, high inflation because of too much money in the system, high taxes, high interest rates. Uh, I, I don't think we can do enough to encourage a, a more retirement savings, and not the least of which is the solvency of our safety net with uh, respect to social security. So uh, I just applaud your leadership, uh, both you and, and, and um, uh, Ranking Member Brady, uh, but I, I think it's noteworthy to, to, to state that a study found 70% of, uh, of Americans uh, feel like they're gonna have to change their plans with respect to retirement work longer um, another study says over 80% say that the pandemic hurt their retirement plans, but we all know too few Americans are saving too few dollars, not because they don't want to, but it's just difficult when you're living paycheck to paycheck. But I, I, uh, I read where the medium retirement balance for working Americans was only $3,000. So, you know, God bless uh, the efforts of this committee when we're working together to do good things when we can find agreement and common ground, we certainly did here. And uh, I'm so pleased to be a part of it. Lastly, if I have a minute, uh, I worked with Jimmy Panetta, the leader of the salad bowl, and he got with the biggest cotton patch guy from West Texas. And we introduced what is a provision in this bill, the Family Attribution Modernization Act. And um, there is a rule that uh, has a disparate treatment of community property states, and, and it skews the outcome of the non-discrimination rule. Uh, it, it skews it so that there are unintended consequences for those couples that are in community property states. And, and I think it actually disproportionately affects uh, female-owned uh, businesses. So I am proud, Jimmy, to work with you, my friend, and uh, to fix that once and for all. And uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for allowing me to uh, comment on this and to be a part of uh, the team effort for the Secure a Strong Retirement Act. Uh, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Beyer, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I'd really like to begin again thanking you and Ranking Member Brady, and just congratulate you on this bipartisan legislation. Every day, fellow citizens ask me, what do we do to overcome the deep divisions in our country? And I don't know much to say except that it's one relationship at a time, one conversation at a time, one meeting, and one bill. And I think you and Congressman Brady have gone a long way towards beginning the healing process in our country. So thank you very much. 
I also want to thank, offer my sincere thanks to the committee staff, particularly Kara Getz, for the hard work that's brought us to this point. It's an enormous bill with lots and lots of work. Thank you, Kara. And uh, I also want to point out that, you know, we often talk about the three-legged -leg stool that our parents and grandparents had with a defined benefit pension, with savings, and with Social Security. And we know that the pensions have largely gone away. We've tried to save the ones that exist. Um, and we still have to fix Social Security. And we'd need to do it in a bipartisan way. And John Larson's Social Security 2100 is an amazing, helpful blueprint for this. Um, but today, we fix savings in, in a really important way. And I'm really pleased that uh, with many of the provisions we've all talked about, but the 401k auto opt-in, um, I've seen in my own life has been very helpful. Years ago, we put it in place in our little family automobile business, and I took the time to call my sister, our CFO, earlier today to say, how much money is in that 401k account right now? And she said, $14,433,000. And that's just from people selling cars and fixing cars who, who are in an opt-in. So it's a very good thing that we're doing for the, for the people of our America. And I'm also really pleased that my bill with my good friend, the Republican friend and automobile dealer from Pennsylvania, Mike Kelly, is included in this, H.R. 2909, which will encourage savers to increase their contributions to worthy charitable causes while providing them with increased financial security in retirement. So this is a very good bill, and I'm proud to support it. And Mr. Chairman, with 30 seconds of personal privilege, I also want to thank Dr. Wenstrup for the story in the press this week about how he had gone out to vaccinate so many people in his hometown around Cincinnati. So, uh, Brad, thank you for that, too. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, and I'm glad you highlighted that. Uh, Mr. Beyer, let me recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Dr. Ferguson, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to strike the last word. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd like to thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman, and Ranking Member Brady for uh, the leadership to, to, to bring this bill forward. Um, like so many folks have said on this call, we're all concerned about Americans' ability to, uh, to save um, and retire in comfort. And while there's still much work to be done, and I appreciate everyone's continued effort towards this, this bill, along with the SECURE Act that we passed uh, in 2019, th these are big steps um, in the right direction. One provision um, that is included in this bill is something that uh, is going to be particularly beneficial to a lot of members in my district, just south of Hartsville-Jackson Airport in Atlanta. Um, I represent an awful lot of airline pilots, and they have a very unique issue in that they have a mandatory retirement. Um, and this bill would allow those that are um, in age 62, 63, and 64 to have higher catch-up provisions um, and, and really Go and make a big step to allow them to, to get on parity with, with other with other saving for retirement. One of the problems that they have is in the, when they retire at age 65, for those pilots that are born 1960 and, and later, they would not qualify for full Social Security benefits until the age of 67. And this is two years after the mandatory retirement, um, and, or they would be penalized for early withdrawal. And that's why I introduced uh, the, the Airline Pilots Re Retirement Security Act, along with Congressman Adrian Smith, to, to get these pilots into a better position. I know that there are others on the committee that, uh, that feel very strongly about this, and I'd like to thank, uh, uh, Chairman, I'd like to thank you for including this in the bill. And, I, and as we look ahead, um, we'd like to continue to find ways to work with the committee um, to, to look at ways to, to increase uh, retirement, but also encourage work for, for many of our older Americans that would like to continue to work and participate in the workforce. Looking at things, areas where we can begin to um, do even more work towards pushing back mandatory withdrawals. So there's still a lot of work to be done here, but Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Brady, thank you so much for your leadership here. Look forward to uh, the passage of this bill in the very near future. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will yield back. Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Evans, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to thank you and the ranking member for meeting the moment. There's probably not anything more interesting at this time in terms of the SECURE Act 2.0. It's probably one of the most 
important things in this nation that people have stability when it comes down to the question of their retirement. Mr. Chairman, as I've watched and been on this committee, and you have demonstrated more so than anybody I've seen about the importance of the retirement system and understand that importance. These are systems that unfortunately at times, there have been challenging times, but they are no fault of the individuals that basically we are providing the kind of security that is necessary. So Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your leadership and the staff and working with Mr. Brady, the ranking member and pulling this together. I just wanna add my voice to this that I think is fantastic and we need to move together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. Estes, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and thank you, Ranking Member Brady, for working together to introduce this critical bipartisan legislation that will help Americans better prepare for retirement. As an engineer, I spent most of my career working on process improvements and helping streamline operations. So I'm especially pleased today that we're talking about streamlining retirement options for Americans and, and encouraging workers and families to secure their future through robust retirement savings options. Increased retirement security for workers and seniors is a major policy priority for me and the Kansans I represent. I spent a lot of time on working on these issues as Kansas State Treasurer which oversees our state's public pension retirement system. I'm glad the Securing a Strong Retirement Act builds on the successful bipartisan SECURE Act passed by Congress in 2019. Like that legislation in 2019, this bill is an excellent example of how Republicans and Democrats can find common ground and make meaningful changes for American families and workers. I'm also pleased that this retirement legislation includes several bipartisan priorities that I've been working on with several Ways and Means colleagues, like raising the requirement minimum distribution age, improving programs for public servants and nonprofits, and making it easier for individuals to pay student loans while still growing their retirement accounts. Under current law, a retiree must begin making withdrawals from their tax deferred retirement accounts when they turn 72, with failure to do so resulting in financial penalty. My bill with Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy included in this legislation will increase that age from 72 to 75 over the next several years. Another priority for bringing parity for employees in public education, nonprofit hospitals, charitable organizations, and others as they invest in their future. While these workers have access to 403B defined contribution retirement savings plans, similar to the 401k plans, they do not have the opportunity to invest in collective investment trust or CITs like their counterparts in the private sector. Thanks to the inclusion of the Public Service Retirement Fairness Bill, a bill I introduced with Congressman Panetta and others on this committee, the many communities and potential retirement savings plans. In addition, the bill has another bipartisan priority to help Americans, especially college graduates attempting to pay off student loans while building their retirement accounts. We know that there are great benefits in their careers with recently accumulated student loan debt. The Retirement Parity for Student Loans Act included in the bill will allow individuals to pay down a student loan instead of contributing to a 401k plan and still receive the employer's match in their retirement plan. This plan benefits the worker now and in the future and will help these young graduates realize the positive aspects of paying down debt and investing in retirement. And because it's voluntary for both the employee and the employer, it provides flexibility for each party to make the best choices for themselves without another one size fits all Washington mandate. I appreciate my friends, Congressman Danny Davis and Darren LaHood for leading this effort. Overall, the provisions in this bill have broad bipartisan support and meet the needs of American workers, employees, retirements today and down the road. Finally, the Securing a Strong Retirement Act begins to address something I managed to state treasure, returning unclaimed property and funds to the rightful owner. This bill establishes the Office of Retirement Savings Lost and Found within the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, or PBGC, tasked with maintaining small employer-based retirement plans separate, separated from their owner and sets up an online database to help reconnect them. I know this provision was extensively negotiated by Chairman Neal and, and Republican Leader Brady, and I'd like to thank both of them for doing so. Hopefully soon we could expand this idea with my bipartisan, bicameral, bicameral unclaimed savings bond act Currently, there's more than $26 billion worth of decades-old 
mature unclaimed savings bonds sitting in the U.S. Treasury, a number of which has grown to, by roughly $10 billion over the last six years. The federal government uses this money as it pleases, even though the money constitute a loan made to the government by citizens decades ago. Despite maintaining records of bond owners and their bonds, Treasury has done next to nothing to contact the rightful owners of the unredeemed bonds, even when the bonds have been matured and are payable. While states often make great efforts to return unclaimed property, Treasury refused to give states access to the record to do so. Our legislation today recognizes the importance of returning unclaimed savings, reti unclaimed retirement accounts to our owners. It's a significant step forward, and hopefully the Unclaimed Savings Bond Act would go further to get returning money back to individuals. While Washington talks a lot about federal spending and government programs, the Securing a Strong Retirement Act is focused on really what matters, the spending and savings decisions that are happening around the kitchen table. This, this uh, bill op opens up opportunities for young savers, makes a difference for public sector employees, and helps manage good investment accounts. Chairman Neal and Ranking Member Brady, I strongly support the legislation and thank you for bringing it to the committee today. Our country needs more wins like this, and with that, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Swazi, to strike the last word. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thanks so much. Uh, leadership really matters, and uh, your leadership here has been extraordinary. Uh, this is Secure 2.0. 1.0 wouldn't have happened without your leadership as well as well as Ranking Member Brady. Uh, uh, Ranking Member Brady, uh, this is the first time I think we've seen you since you announced that you're gonna be retiring from the Congress. I wanna congratulate you and I'm so happy that this is gonna be part of your legacy of getting something so important done like this, along with Chairman Neal, that is gonna affect millions of people uh, for generations to come. I think the American people are hungry for us to do things together to solve problems. They're desperate for it. We all hear about it all the time, about how discouraged people are, about the partisan infighting. Uh, I, I wanna work with all of my colleagues uh, to let people know that we are getting this done on a bipartisan basis. I wanna help people have some relief uh, that uh, Democrats and Republicans can work together on real legislation that impacts real people's lives in real ways. Uh, every, every day, uh, 10,000, baby boomers become senior citizens. We have a big uh, storm coming in our country with people with their long-term retirement and their long-term care issues. Uh, this legislation is gonna make a big difference uh, for a lot of people, as I said, for generations to come. I wanna thank uh, Dr. Weinstrup uh, when he was able to take time off from delivering vaccines. He actually works on legislation too. And uh, uh, our legislation regarding exchange traded funds is included here as well. And I want to thank John Larson uh, for his advice and guidance and how to get this done. Uh, and I want to thank all my colleagues for who've indicated their support for this legislation and all the different input. But again, leadership really matters. People are hungry for it. Uh, this is a great example of leadership by you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and again, thanks and congratulations to uh, Ranking Member Brady and to all of my colleagues for working together to get something done that'll really help people. Thank you so much, and I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Smucker, to strike the last word. The gentleman on mute. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. OK. Sorry about that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so but thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Brady, for uh, your commitment to advancing this uh, legislation. Uh, I know it's a priority of both of yours, and I'm so proud to be part of this committee and part of uh, uh, this legislation that uh, is bipartisan and that will help Americans, help my constituents and help people all across America become more financially secure. It's been mentioned before, a quarter of Americans, a quarter of Americans have no retirement plan at all, and nearly half lack sufficient savings to last them their lifetime after leaving the workforce. So this bill takes many important steps to help to improve that, to modernize saving for retirement. Uh, I like that the legislation includes incentives to help small businesses to better afford to offer a retirement plan uh, for their employees. So it's going to 
expand access for many hardworking Americans to a retirement plan, helping them uh, better prepare for uh, their future. I think it's great that the bill includes uh, reforms on catch-up contributions so that older Americans who are approaching retirement soon, retirement soon can make sure that they're financially uh, ready as w- uh, well. So thanks so much for all the work, and I'm, I'm very proud to support this. I do want to mention one uh, particular provision that I'm proud to have included is legislation that I helped introduce with uh, my colleagues across the aisle, Representative Gwen Moore and Representative Lucy McBath, uh, to help individuals who are enduring domestic abuse, uh, help them by allowing them to access their 401k and take out funds that may be necessary to move them uh, to a safer environment. We, we all know the current law allows for hardship distributions from a 401k for various reasons like medical, funeral expenses, or national disaster, and so on, uh, but did not allow previously uh, uh, withdrawals, hardship withdrawals for uh, domestic abuse. And so this legislation the, uh, called the Savings Access for Escaping and Rebuilding Act, I think is very, very important. One of the things that we learned was that in many cases, the 401k, which is individually owned, you know, they may be a joint ownership of a lot of assets, uh, but the 401k may, uh, in many cases, be the only private account that a victim of domestic abuse may have separate from the abusive partner. So allowing them to access a portion of that in an emergency situation can really help escape the abuser and help an individual begin to rebuild their lives. And, you know, of course, we uh, want uh, savers to keep funds in 401k. Uh, We don't want to encourage withdrawals until retirement, but there are certainly times when that's needed. And for victims of domestic abuse, being uh, being able to access their savings could really provide the gateway to safety and rebuilding their lives. So um, I'm pleased that that provision is in this bill. I'm very happy to support this bill. And again, uh, thank you for all the work leading up to this, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Panetta, to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. It's great to see the committee working in this bipartisan fashion to really make some common sense improvements to help American workers secure a stronger retirement. Uh, Obviously, I want to commend the chairman and ranking member for coming together to work on this legislation that really would incentivize and grow savings for retirement. I'm especially thankful that the bipartisan legislation that I've authored is included in today's Securing a Strong Retirement Act. First, I'd like to highlight the Public Service Retirement Fairness Act, legislation that I introduced with fellow Ways and Means members Ron Estes, Brendan Boyle, and Darren LaHood, as well as my friends on the Financial Services Committee, Madeline Dean and Andy Barr. The bill would ensure that public sector and nonprofit retirement savings programs have the same access to low cost investments as private sector retirement plans. Teachers and nonprofit employees in my district out here in California tirelessly serve our community, but out here they face a ridiculously high cost of living that is further compounded by a lack of access to flexible retirement plans that really can undermine their savings. Specifically, the bill would help faculty and staff at public education institutions, nonprofit hospitals, charitable organizations, and other nonprofits who have access to 403B defined contribution retirement savings plans. Now, 403B plans are similar to 401K plans offered in the private sector, but 403Bs cannot invest in collective investment trust, otherwise known as CITs. Now, CITs are collectively management investment vehicles that typically have lower fees and more flexibility than current 403B investment options. That's why my legislation would permit 403B plans to invest in CITs and therefore would save those Americans thousands of dollars by ensuring that they have the same access to lower cost, lower fee retirement options as private sector employees. Now, I'm also grateful to my friend and fellow member on the committee, colleague, classmate, and yes, representative of the Cotton Bowl of America, Congressman Jody Arrington, for legislation to modernize the outdated family attribution rules to provide women business owners in particular 
more independence. As Jody mentioned, the Bipartisan Family Attribution Modernization Act would modernize family attribution rules that penalize small businesses in community property states, such as California and Texas, states with community property laws that we know force business owners to bundle their businesses with that of their spouse when performing retirement plan coverage and non-discrimination tests. However, this can be harmful to the growing number of women-owned businesses, which should be treated independently of their spouse's businesses. This act would disregard community property rules to ensure that business owners are not unfairly penalized for living in a community property state. It's a long overdue change that would help ensure that the growing number of women-owned businesses are not held back by outdated tax laws. Lastly, I want to thank Congresswoman Chu for her leadership on the Encourage Women Americans to Save Act, which we introduced with Congresswoman Sewell. That legislation would update the Sabres tax credits into Sabres matched. As, as the pandemic has left too many lower and middle income Americans financially strained, we must ensure that they have the necessary resources to fully take advantage of incentives in our tax code that would help secure their retirements and financial futures. The Encouraging Americans to Save Act would expand the Sabres tax credit eligibility for those without tax liability, and it would match retirement plan contributions for private or public plans like the Cal Savers plans in California. So once again, I'm proud to support this bipartisan legislation. It's clearly legislation that would help hardworking Americans save for the future and ultimately help the future of America. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Hearn, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I move the last, uh, strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Now, before I came to Congress, I was a small business owner for more than 35 years. My businesses range across the spectrum of industries from McDonald's restaurants to manufacturing, technology, farming, and banking. I've hired thousands of people from teenagers getting their first jobs to top level executives in every position in between. I've managed the payroll, built the benefits package, experienced firsthand the challenges of starting and maintaining employee retirement plans. Starting up a retirement plan for small business can be a daunting, time consuming task, especially if you're the primary owner with the sole responsibility to do it. Steep research, setup, and maintenance costs deter many small business owners from creating retirement plans for their employees. Not only is the owner absorbing the costs of setting up and maintaining a retirement plan, but they also have to educate employees on the plan details. Additionally, employers are intimidated by the thousands of pages of IRS regulations and fear the penalties associated with unintentional, innocent missteps. Despite all these genuine efforts to encourage employees to save for their retirement, some employees still have to take full advantage of the benefit. For example, in my franchise experience, I spent thousands of dollars funding annual administrative costs for retirement plans for many years. And out of the over 10,000 employees, less than 5% have actually used these plans. But despite those low participation numbers, I still had the steep financial burden of creating and maintaining the program for a much larger capacity than was used. This should not be the case. So small business owners bear the huge burden of starting and investing retirement plans for employees who would rather have more money in their immediate paycheck than plan for the future. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated these problems with retirement planning. Recent surveys from Pew show that roughly half of all non-retired adults say the pandemic will make it harder to achieve their financial goals. Some 44% of those adults think it will take three years or longer just to get back to the financial standing they held before the pandemic, while one in 10 don't think their finances will ever recover. According to statistics from senior, the Census Bureau, more than 3.1 million Americans over the age of 55 plan to apply for Social Security benefits earlier than they once thought because of the pandemic, resulting in a permanent cut in their lifetime monthly benefits. It is clear we need to do something. The current system is failing many Americans. In Congress, we must continue working together, together to improve and build policies that ensure small businesses can afford to invest in their employees. Our job is to ensure that government stays out of the way for employees planning for their long-term well-being. We must implement policies that make it easier for business owners to provide retirement benefits for their hardworking employees and to put American workers in the best possible shape for a comfortable retirement. 
That's what we're hoping to do with Secure 2.0. And I want to highlight the provisions in the bill, bill that encourage small businesses to open plans and incentivize employees to participate in the plans. These bipartisan provisions eliminate government roadblocks to open retirement plans, but providing tax credits to small employers that cover up to 100% of the startup costs in the first year of the plan is established. Allowing this startup credit to apply to employers who choose to join existing multi-employer plans and give small businesses a nine and a half month grace period to correct any contribution areas. This bill also allows small business owners to offer financial incentives to their employees who join and contribute to a plan, which encourages employee participation early in their careers. Additionally, any new established plans will be required to have auto enrollment with further increases, employee participation and employer sponsored plans that helps with retirement investment. Secure 2.0 also motivates employees to save more and invest in their retirement plans for longer periods of time by pushing back the age for RMD to 75, allowing individuals approaching age 65 to contribute more money to catch up their plans. Each of these measures allows individuals to save longer and invest more in their retirement plans. These provisions in Secure 2.0 encourage businesses owners to invest and we encourage our workers to save for the future. We give them a sense of financial independence and reduce their reliance on the government safety nets. It is time for Congress to empower our workforce to invest in their retirement savings. And this starts with the passage of Secure 2.0. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Brady, I just wanna say thank you so much for your leadership on this. This is gonna be awesome for the small business owners of America and for their employees. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Gomez, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and uh, Ranking Member Brady for your leadership on this important legislation. The Secure Act, which is the committee, which the committee led last Congress, made significant strides in expanding and strengthening retirement and saving incentives for workers. I'm glad that we are continuing to make enhancements in this area through the Securing a Strong Retirement Act. This bill notably increases automatic enrollment in retirement plans, making it easier for small businesses to establish retirement plans and expands incentives to encourage employee participation. This, particularly vital, this is particularly vital for promoting retirement savings among workers of color, particularly Blacks and Latinos. Last month, the committee's racial equity initiative heard from Dorothy Brown on the racial inequities in our tax code. In her recent book, Professor Brown highlighted how people of color are much less likely to hold jobs that offer retirement plans, which contributed to reduce economic mobility. I believe this bill will help close the gap. As an ardent advocate of addressing our student debt crisis, I'm also encouraged that this legislation seeks to help student uh, borrowers allowing employers to make matching retirement plan contributions for student loan payments will ensure employees do not have to choose between paying down their student loan debt and saving for retirement. Lastly, I'm glad to see we are helping workers with uh, mandatory retirement plans like Alpha Pilots and others save more for retirement. Mr. Chairman, I strongly support this bill and thank my colleagues on this committee for their hard work and events. And with that, I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentlelady from West Virginia, Ms. Miller, to strike the last word. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Chairman Neal and Ranking Member Brady. I am so glad to speak here today in support of the Securing a Strong Retirement Act 2021. This legislation is a result of hard work from both parties and I am encouraged to see our members coming together to offer strong protections and incentives for workers saving for retirement. Many of the provisions in this bill will help businesses, especially small and newer companies, offer competitive and comprehensive retirement plans that fit their employees' needs, helping workers at all stages of their careers to save for their future. With that, I strongly advocate for the many aspects of this bill. And I hope that we can continue to develop our bipartisan work in such a way that will make the American people proud. I yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentlelady. Mr. Brady would like to be recognized out of order for 
some additional comments? Gentlemen, is right. Great. First, first, Chairman, um, you know, the comments today from both sides of the aisle, I think, are really encouraging. This is a committee that likes to find common ground on issues that really matter. I think, uh, again, I think uh, both Republicans and Democrats relish the opportunities to work together on issues like that, and that's very apparent. Uh, secondly, um, you know, I know we set out to make big changes in helping those who rarely save. They're mainly low income, and they are often working for small businesses. I think we took a big step forward in this legislation to address and try to help those non-savers become lifetime savers, have more control over their retirement savings, more security. Uh, I know uh, we were all a bit disappointed that the original score of the draft bill proved to be so large. Uh, I think there is a role for savers credit uh, going forward. Uh, I know there's a bigger role for ESOPs uh, going forward. There are a number of provisions that, uh, that had a significant score that uh, as we monitor the impact and results uh, of, this, uh, of this bill today as it becomes law, uh, I and other members, I think, looking forward, look forward to work with you, Chairman, and our Democrat colleagues um, in continuing to work fine-tune help where we can in these areas. The final point I'd like to make, and, and I was, frankly, was a little neglectful of talking about the bipartisan work here. I know Congressman Kelly's uh, work with uh, our Democrat colleagues, helping small businesses with this tax credit to match employees' contributions, really key. Congressman Swiker, you know, has a pension for catch-up um, uh, retirement savings. The doubling of it, I think, is really important. Congressman LaHood talked about uh, employees paying down their student uh, debt uh, loan uh, and then allowing the business to match them. I think so critical. Both parties work together on this. Congressman Winstrup has long been uh, a, a champion for helping military spouses by providing a tax credit for small businesses that make military spouses eligible for PAMP plan benefits sooner. Uh, he also is reducing costs for retiree related to uh, ETS. Congressman Kelly, a longstanding proponent of retirement security, you know, recognizes different situations our retirees face and, and he and I have worked together closely to raise the minimum age by which you're forced to take savings out. Uh, I think this is, uh, and the penalties related to it, his work I think is crucial for, for seniors, uh, also helping charities uh, by expanding options for contributions and uh, helping the provision. I, I'm very proud of uh, the new baby savings uh, provisions and, and the clarifications here on those of us who uh, have children or those of us who have adopted children. Congressman Smucker's provision on domestic violence, Congressman Arrington's provisions on attribution of business ownership, Congressman Schweikert's provision to allow solo 401k plans to fund employer and employee contributions. Uh, the point being here, I think uh, all our colleagues are working together beautifully on a very important issue. I'm thankful, Chairman, for your leadership uh, here and your team for working so closely with us. And uh, let's continue this good work as we build on this package and other issues uh, that are so important to American working families. With that, Chairman, yield back. I thank the gentleman. Okay. Uh, now let us proceed to the next stage. Uh, are there any amendments to the amendments in the nature of a substitute? If there are no amendments, the question is on the adoption of the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Members are reminded to unmute yourselves for the voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Since in the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. The amendment to the nature of a substitute is agreed to. 
Now let me recognize Mr. Mr. Byer for the purpose of offering a motion. Mr. Chairman, with appreciation for the four-part harmony, I move that the committee favorably report H.R. 2954 as amended to the House of Representatives. The question is on favorably reporting H.R. 2954 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to and H.R. 2954 is amended, is ordered favorably reported to the House of Representatives. I just want to thank the uh, staff on both sides, thank the members, and I want to thank Kara Getz in particular, who has been a stalwart on the retirement sphere for all of us on the committee. And uh, I also would like to say that uh, it's my belief that this is a really good day for the